Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, having a great day. It is Friday and we are here finishing up the week with this Eveltal and Groudon team that we've played for the last couple of weeks on the channel. Obviously we had that little bit of a break in between because of things going on outside of the channel. But um, I hope you've enjoyed the run that we've had with Eveltal and Groudon. Uh, as you know, it's one of my favourite calls and um, I've really had a nice time with it. But I am ready to move on to a new team which we will be doing on Monday next weekend just to remind you guys i did put a poll up on the youtube channel on tuesday just to ask you put the feelers out what you wanted to play next week on the channel there is a few options there and obviously if the options in the, the poll aren't something that you would like to see played leave a comment and i will make sure to feature exactly and as much as i can from those suggestions over the next couple of weeks now i think the poll at the minute is leading with mega man so there might have been a little bit of confusion there so i do apologize mega man was a coin phrase from like 2016 in that format when we first got mega manetric even before that obviously i think probably 2014 and um, so for the the newer players to the format you probably want know that and there's a little bit of confusion there but Mega Man is Mega Manetric so there's the clarification and sorry for any confusion but I do think that is leading the way at the minute so there is a lot of room for other options to be added in there and um, so do keep your votes coming and obviously comments coming on that poll as well if you haven't already and I will make sure to feature like I say as many things as I can over the next couple of weeks from the great comments that we've had and getting back to comments as well I did give all of you an opportunity to ask you what you'd like to see featured with this this call to finish us off today and uh, as you can see on your screen now I've picked one of the comments and thank you so much to each and every one of you all of the comments have been amazing and suggestions as well but unfortunately it's really hard reading through them I love them all but I can only pick so many of them and the one I did pick out for today's episode was from Scott Westwood so thank you so much Scott and um, we have got the Whimsicott it works a lot like the jump Jumpluff in the team that we featured yesterday it has got the Encore it's got the fake tears which we're going to utilize alongside this mega Gengar it can work alongside the Veltal and the Groudon because they're all special as well with that Coco as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got the Tailwind there as well on it. I've got the Mega Gengar is exactly the same. We've got that Encore Disable combination that we can utilize quite well and see if we can get that playing today because it was on the Jump Pluff and the Gengar but we never really got it going too much in the last episode. So if we can get that going today, that'd be amazing. Kept the Hitmon top the same. We've introduced Tapu Koko to have something to overwrite the Psychic Terrain which could hinder that Prankster ability on the Whimsicott. The other thing that we need to watch out for is is fake tears thing, things that are dark type because obviously they're immune to pranks their ability as well so that's something we need to keep in mind going into these matches we've got the eveltal we've changed that up for a salt vest you know the misty seed one drawback with that was as good as it was it give you access to status condition moves and tailwind support and things like that but you were locked to staying on the field and once that seed had activated you kind of really you didn't want it to ick it out you didn't want to lose the boosts but with the assault vest you've obviously got the freedom to switch in and out and a lot more flexibility there so it'll be nice to give that a go today it's got dark pulse uh, and oblivion wing now as well being more special variation and then we've got the ground on which is a full special variation as well so it's a very special base team the only physical attacker that we've got here is the hit on top maybe an option that we could have looked at would have been a coco gone maybe mixed or maybe physical uh, as an option there just to give us a bit more options we have got file player on Eveltal so we've got options there but it's going to be a lot of fun to just send off this call in today's episode and I really do hope you enjoy it as always though the team is down in the description below there is a poker paste and a roll paste for you guys to check out try out take away it might inspire some ideas and if you do try it out obviously as always let me know what your thoughts are and how you get on with it and uh, if you do I'm sure you will have a lot of fun but getting into today's episode I think the music is on we're all ready to go so let's find our first opponent hopefully it doesn't take too long and as always guys if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content as things do settle down at home here for myself we will be getting around to doing a lot more content we've obviously got a big switch uh, sword and shield announcement next week so we'll be doing some coverage on that when that does get announced and uh, other content around the, uh, the Pokemon franchise as well so yeah and leave your comments because I love hearing from you all and one thing I will say is that because of how hectic things have been at home I haven't been as good as I normally am catching up and replying to all of your comments but I do appreciate each and every one and I always try to make an effort to reply to each comment that I do get and I will be working through them and I do read each and every one so thank you so much for those but we've got a first upon 
one of the day, we got Josh, so let's hop straight into team preview and check out what we're going to be going up against in this first match today. Right, Josh is playing a team of Eveltal, Kyoga, Gengar, Landorus, Smeagol and Stack Attacker. So a really nice team and uh, kind of the, the yin and yang to what we're both playing. He's got the Kyoga, I've got the Groudon. Uh, we've got similar things outside of that. He's got the Landorus there. It's going to be the Intimidate support of the team. It's going to provide another ground immunity. Uh, but this is where Hidden Part Ice could come quite useful on our Groudon. Uh, if we can get it set up and in a nice position. Got the Smeagol there. It's going to be a bit annoying to play around. Especially with its uh, Follow Me, Fake Out, Wide Guard, all the shenanigans that you normally see on Smeagol and then the stack attack for the speed control there probably going to support that Kyogre and one thing we need to watch out for is the Gengar trap with that Kyogre so I think what we'll do is lead Eveltal and uh, hit him on top I'm going to bring actually I'm not I'm going to bring Coco up front hit him on top and then I'm going to bring Groudon in the back and I think we just it's good the Groudon's in the top slot, so automatically locked in because we were running out of time and I did go over quite a bit in that one. And you know what I'm like, I like to chat, but I need to keep an eye on this time, I need to. But uh, going to be good. I'm looking forward to playing a new team next week, I really am. But I, I think it's because this is this playing this team, we started so well with it, we had really good momentum and then things happened, obviously. Althea was born and there was a bit of disruption there, so it made things a little bit more difficult um, to uh, to keep that momentum going and that's why I feel like it's been a really dragged out long process with this team, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I hope you guys have been enjoying it, that is the main thing. So we are going to go, uh, we're going to see Gengar and Velta. I can't imagine the Gengar um, attacking this turn, to be honest. Um, the Velta, what are you going to do, just protect? Uh, I could snarl, I could snarl, and I could switch out Coco. Um, or I could just protect Coco. It's just if I see a Tailwind from the Eveltal, that could be a little bit problematic. Um, kind of want to see move into the Eveltal as well. Uh, it's just if the Eveltal switches out for like Landorus, that could be a little bit problematic. But I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to lock in. Ah, here we go straight away, Landorus. <laughs> oh. Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Okay. I mean, the Gengar probably does protect here. Mm. If it doesn't, it's going to take a hefty amount of damage, but I can't see it attacking. I think it wants to Mega Evolve, trap us in. Yeah. And we're going to have a Z-Move animation for no reason. How many times? I should make a, a, a clip reel of how many times you do this. And it's like... Build up, build up, build up, and ah, uh, deflate. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I mean, we probably saw that coming all day long, but it's fine. It's not a decent amount of damage to that Landorus. Um, I need to snarl again, to be honest. Uh, the Coco's in a terrible position, but if we can... Uh, maybe it would have been better. I think foul playing into the Landorus here would have been the better option. Then we put it in Dazzling Gleam range, probably from the Coco, um the following turn. But I, I'm just aware that this Gengar is still pressured, you know. It doesn't want to sit on the field right now um, and take a snarl, for sure. Uh, yeah, so it does withdraw. We get, we're get we going to be able to get at least uh, the Coco switch out this next turn, which is, which is decent. And we've got... I think him on top in the back, which is a decent switch in for that. So we get let off a little bit there. Um, but like I say, if the Gengar had stayed in, it would have taken a snarl and it wouldn't have really appreciated that. We're going to see a rock slide come out from the Landorus. It's going to be into our Veltal. Do decent enough damage there. Um, and uh, we do get the snarl off and get a bit more damage onto this this Landorus here. Now the veltal has got to feel very pressured right now. Um, and it probably doesn't. Thing is, I'm going to go for, do I just foul play into the Landorus or do I Oblivion Wing? I think Oblivion Wing is probably better at this point, just to get some health back. And the fact that I'm bringing Intimidate onto the field now and lowering Landorus' attack power, it does weaken the ability of foul play and getting some health back onto our Veltals. A little bit more important, I would say, than, 
then um, going for the knockout here when we don't necessarily really need it right now. Uh, so we'll get top in. We got the fake out going into this next turn. I think my, my opponent's main prerogative is trying to get rid of uh, the Veltal. We're going to see the lander is just protecting the Oblivion Wing into that slot there, but blocked. And then a snarl come out from the opposing Veltal. I think one of the things we could potentially do now is just fake out foul play into that lander slot. Although our eject button activates, so we will get Coco back onto the field. Uh, it does indicate that the um, the opposing Eveltal is a salt fest as well, and they normally are in this sort of kind of makeup of team. So the Z move would have been great, but we're not going to be able to just freely do that. Um, pick off the Oblivion Wing again, or oh, foul play this time. Probably foul play is better into the Landorus, and then, like I say, it is in. It, it then will be in dazzling gleam range, and we'll just protect the Coco. We could have always switched in. Um, okay, we're going to see a U-turn. It's coming in. Is it going to be the, the Kyogre or the Gengar? Like the Gengar's not going to appreciate a far play. Don't think it'll go down to it. I think it's a roll, unlike your standard Gengars. But it depends what the EV spread is. Um. My opponent's playing it smartly though, you know, knowing that the Coco's a little bit pressured here. The Eveltal not protecting though definitely indicates that it is an Assault Vest variant, so... I think that makes it easier for approaching the rest of this game. And the Coco's going to be really quite pivotal to us. I wonder if we're going to see just the fourth Pokemon, which is likely to be that Kyogre, yeah. So, um... Yeah, the Kyogre, uh, the, the Coco on our end is like so, so good for us right now. I'm going to see a Snarl. We'll get a far play into the Kyogre. This should do a decent amount. Yeah, it's definitely going to be into um, in Thunderbolt range now. Yeah. And there's an Oblivion Wing from the opposing Veltal into our Veltal. So, um, yeah, we can just go... Oblivion Wing into the Eveltal and I think Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. <sighs> I kind of see the Eveltal switching out to Landorus here and the Kyogre protecting. But we might see a vice versa that the Kyogre going back out to the Landorus in a snarl coming out from the Eveltal. It's such a, like a cat and mouse game though, this one. Um, oh, we're just seeing the Kyogre stay in, so my opponent may be like thinking that like the double bluff there where we're not going to attack into it but I just this is the thing like why not attack into it there you know if you don't attack into the Kyogre there we get punished um, and if we do then we're not really threatened too much by what's out on the field at the minute the Coco's not threatened by the Eveltal um, the, the, the Kyogre if it stays in and does attack then you know it's going to be slower than the, the Coco so we do manage to get rid of it that way I'd imagine the Landorus will probably make its way back onto the field now. Um, but I think in these Eveltal matchups it's so useful having an, a good solid answer for Eveltal. That's, I think that's one of the big things here. Uh, we do have to worry about um, Rock Slide for sure. But I am just going to foul play into the Landorus this time um, as I think we'll take we will take a rock slide minus one. It's just whether or not we flinch or not. But then we've got the, we got him on top on the field. It's got wide guard support. Um, if the Landorus has got the Z move, then it's going to have tectonic rage, which doesn't affect our Eveltal anyway. Uh, and the wide guard, yeah. We need to watch out for Oblivion Wing from the opposing Eveltal for sure. There's the rock slide. It does miss him on top, the ninja. Uh, we do uh, just take that. And we get the foul play into this Landorus. Obviously, minus one not helping us out too much now, but actually more than enough to take it down to minus one, which is ideal. Oblivion Wing coming out. This will probably be into our Veltal. That's into him on top. Okay. Um, I think the thing now is, though, the, the Gengar is still an issue because... It can take down our Eveltal uh, with a sludge bomb for sure. 
Um, I'm gonna go for a Snarl, and I have to fake out the opposing Yveltal. But the Gengar probably just Sludge Bombs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You, like, you need to do that to get rid of it. And at that low health, we're not gonna be able to, to, to take it at all. Uh, we do flinch the Yveltal here. We've got no speed control on our team, but we do have a Groudon that we can utilize. Um, and does put a lot of pressure on. As long as we can get rid of the Gengar, then Tapakok can deal with this Yveltal pretty easy. Um, now what I would think my opponent's probably gonna try and angle for here is protect the Gengar. Snarl the, the Groudon. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and um, just protect Groudon here and go for a close combat. I think the one thing you would worry about in this situation is maybe a substitute from this Gengar. That would put a bit of a spanner in the works. But if we can just get close combat onto this Yveltal, it'll do some nice damage. And we've also got to worry about the Oblivion Wing as well. Of course. But the Gengar's so pressured here, I think you need to snarl. Um, and then the next turn we can Y guard Earth Power the Gengar. If that's how it plays out. If that's how it plays out. But we'll have to see what my opponent does. So. Yeah, there's the Protect from the Gengar. I think angling for that Snarl for sure. But we're not revealing. We aren't revealing the Wide God just yet. Oh, it's a foul play. Okay. I mean, that makes even more sense, but yeah. that's not bad. That's not bad damage at all. Uh, it really isn't. Um, I, I still worry about a potential substitute from the Gengar, um, but I am going to wide guard this turn, just in case we do see the Snarl, because I think that's that's a, a way for my opponent to to neuter the Groudon, unless they don't expect a special set. Ah, there it is, you see. Yeah, that's it. We do outspeed the Velcro though. We kind of want to see the Snarl now. We want to see the Snarl. Not the foul play. Because then we don't want it to come down to speed time. Okay, Oblivion Wing. I don't mind that too much. We'll take down our top. Problem is though, the Coco coming in. Hmm. And the speed tie with the Gengar. But we could potentially just Thunderbolt an eruption. That might be enough to get the Evalto. Be certainly enough to get the Gengar if it, if it attacks here. Or do we just protect the Coco here? Because I think if you're the Gengar, you've got to chase down the Coco now. That's like the main priority. Because your Evalto is the one thing that can win this match. So we could protect. The call call and eruption. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Because I expect the Gengar to attack this turn. And if it does, then we can catch it out with the eruption. Let's see. It's like such a 50 50 call, this right now. But I think this could be. Yeah, maybe. Doesn't look like the Gengar is gonna protect unless it is a speed tie. Yeah, there we go. And we outspeed, yeah, so this is yeah, this is what we need to get rid of the Gengar. And then the Yveltal will be in range now. Unless it does Oblivion Wing. It goes for a Snarl, well, that's fine. I mean, at this point, it's alright. Because we still get a fairly powerful Eruption and Thunderbolt, and that will be more than enough to take down the Yveltal. So... Yeah, we just didn't want to risk the speed tie there, and I think that's the one thing. Like, if we risk it and we lose it, then we probably lose the game. Um, but very good game to Josh, and I think it came right down to the end there. Really nice game for us to kick off with today, um, and a re really exciting game. It's, again, one of those games that I'd love to go into a best of three and just have a look at how what the adaptations are that he would make going into that next game and see how he can kind of tackle it. But Ivaltal there was... The, the big difficulty for I think both players to deal with and the edge came down to us having the type of Coco uh, that made it a bit easier and you saw how well Josh kind of wore down at and Velto throughout that match to get to the point where it just went down to Gengar and then from there we didn't really have too much to um, 
so we kind of switch out and we had to make certain plays to get to get the win in the end but we uh, we did manage to but very good game and like you say nice way for us to kick off today and we got our next opponent straight away from the Dominican Republic which is a nice change isn't it so we'll hop straight into team preview so next opponent today is running a Zerndon team uh, consisting of Xerneas and Groudon which are the restricted combination you've got a supporting cast of Incineroar going to be the Intimidate support the Fake Out support Pivot support there the Amoongus which is going to be um, kind of an anti-trick room measure I guess for the team it also disrupts has redirection as well that we need to watch out for Tabulele likely scarfed I always want to say it's scarfed when I see it in this format and then the Nihiligo there uh, does do a lot of work against yeah, this team, you know, uh, we have to be very careful with the Nihiligo. It's a very threatening Pokemon. Uh, we do have our own ground on to deal with it, but um, yeah, we've got to be a little bit careful with how we play things out here. So, mm, like Whimsicott's very good. I do like Whimsicott a lot here, uh, especially for being able to shut down the Xerneas. It does give the Nihiligo a little bit of room to play around with. Could we go a bit of a passive lead, Whimsicott hit on top? Uh, I do think him on top's going to be quite useful here. Um, and Veltal in the back and Groudon. Just then we got no. Now we do have speed control. Um, do we need Coco? Coco could be good for the the taunt onto the Xerneas, uh, but I'd rather actually, you know, yeah, Whimsicott's. I'm just thinking now. Just thinking now, if the Lele does come, we can't utilize Whimsicott at all because of the Psychic Terrain. So we're kind of knackered. My opponent's brought that, and we haven't brought Coco. That's the main reason why we've got Coco on the team. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, there's there's Incineroar, Tapu Lele. Okay, okay, okay. Um, hmm. I think we might need to go down a different route with this one. I think we might need to. Um, get our Reveltal onto the field. Hopefully that Lele locks into Psychic, not Moonblast, so we can get Reveltal onto the field and start spamming Snarls, and I think that's probably the only thing that we can maybe do here. Um, we could pull a double switch. We could try and get a Tailwind up. Let's try and get a Tailwind up. We can't get... Yeah, let's try. And if we lose Whimsicott here, then fair enough. And then yeah, we'll pave the way for Groudon to come in. Okay, Groudon coming in. I wonder if we see... Just a U-turn into Xerneas from that Incineroar. Or maybe the Tapulele coming back in. Make, it would make sense, but we are going to get a Tailwind up here regardless, so that's that's good for us, for sure. Um, get me Velto onto the field. What's this Incineroar going to do? Just Flare Blitz, maybe. Oh, Knock Off. Ah, okay. We don't really want to lose our Assault Burst on our Velto, though. That's the thing. Um... Hmm. We can't really do anything with Whimsicott right now. I'm going to bring in him on top. And I think what we'll do is go for a... Do we Snarl? Or Dark Pulse into the Groudon? Like, Dark Pulse into the Groudon is probably not a bad idea. And if him on top gets hit, then it gives us a free switch into Groudon in Tailwind, which is maybe going to be... We need to kind of pull us through here. If we lose our assault vest, Incineroar with knockoff, we just don't see it anymore. Still got utility, obviously. Incineroar actually going to switch out. We are going to see Xerneas hit the field now. Okay. Hopefully, we see this Groudon attack. No. Ah, oh, this is not what we want to see. This is not what we want to see at all. Um. Hmm. Because we're going to have to snarl. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, let's go into Wimmy. Let's get rid of Wimmy and Snarl. We have to Snarl. We have to Snarl. 
There's no way we're not going to see Geomancy here, though. 100% Geomancy. I think we'll try and just check this Xerneas. Makes things a little bit easier. The Psychic Terrain coming out has really, really scuppered our ability to do it very much. Incineroar coming back in. Maybe the, the Xerneas protects here. Just want that Whimsicott slot. I just want the free switch in to, uh, to Groudon. That's all I want. We're we not gonna... Ugh. Okay. Okay, okay. Snarl misses the Xerneas. The one thing we needed to hit. Oh, I'm just going for a Moonblast. Not wanting to go for the Geomancer just yet. I mean, that, that stings even more. That stings so much. <laughs> it really does. Um... I'm going to have to try and get the Hitmontop back on so we can. Uh, we're just going to get faked out, though. That's the problem. Um, let's try and protect and get Hitmontop into this Evalto slot. If the Incineroar does fake out, it's going to fail. We'll probably see a Moonblast into this slot, but then finally we are going to be able to get a Groudon onto the field. I wonder if we'll see a snow uh, geomancy here though. Hmm. A geomancy, of course, of course, of course. No hmm. fake out coming out from the incineral. The Psychic Terrain, I think it's got one more turn left. There's a Flare Blitz. Yeah, the Psychic Terrain's got one more turn left. The only thing I can do is maybe try get a Tailwind and Wide Guard. And if my opponent makes the play of you turning into Lele, then the Psychic Terrain will end and then we can lock Lock out that Xerneas. Potentially. That's an all miss. And then the crit Moonblast. Ugh. We're going to see the Incineroar switch out. Tapalele. That's crazy. Okay. So the Psychic Trim will end this next turn. It's not really helping us too much right now, though. Because we need the Dazzle to come out, not the Moonblast. Yeah. Okay. We get that. Yeah, hmm. We can fit tears the Xerneas. It's just I don't think Groudon's gonna outspeed it by any means. We could protect we could protect Whimsicott and sack him on top. Is him on top gonna be doing anything here? Um or we could sack you Beltle. Well, we'll try and get Ivaltal in, regardless. I just hope my opponent starts panicking now where they're trying to... Yeah, they're going to try and protect now with the Xerneas. And then they're going to try and fake out the Whimsicott the next turn. There's not really too much we can do to get around this because then they've got a, they've got the switch in to Lele back at any point that they want now. And I just don't think we've got enough to get around. Like, Taunt on Whimsicott, probably something that we need rather than like relying on like an encore lock into geomancy because it's so easy it's so easily played around and they aren't falling for the um i mean could try a double protect it's not really doing anything now i think we could try a fake tears into the xerneas and then a snarl but we're definitely going to see a fake out here. I think this one is is a little bit too far for us to come back from right now. Boosted Xerneas is going to be doing too much. Moonblast going to be into Evalto. Oh, into... Oh, okay, so we do get a Snarl. Okay. Hopefully this one hits. Yep. If our last one had hit, that would have been ideal, because then the Xerneas... Would have been just neutral right now. 
Um, well, this is where Groudon comes in. I mean, can Groudon add speed? As only as I just don't think it's going to be able to. Yveltal definitely doesn't. It's just too much for my opponent to, uh, so yeah. I think the problem comes down to is if relying on the on call lock 100% here. Like, it's just not the not the way we should have went with this one. But, beside the fact, we will try and see if we can do something here. Hmm. I'm gonna see if Sinero switch out Tapu Lele come in. And if Groudon if Groudon does outspeed the Xerneas, we'll be able to get rid of the Lele. And then if they Moonblast the Groudon, we'll get another Snarl off. Which is gonna be good. I imagine we'll see a Dazzling Gleam now. There's not really too much reason not to. So we get the Lele. I think we would have gotten that anyway. Uh, we could have done with the crit on to yeah, there's the Dazzle. Uh, the Psychic Train obviously back up on the field. So there's no fake out support going on now. Tailwind Pit is out. Mm. Helping Hand. Earth Power. Will that be enough to get Xerneas? I doubt it. Cinero coming out onto the field. I think my opponent has to go um, has to go Moonblast. And I think he got Moonblast into Do you Moonblast the hit on top? Because you're wary of that, you you don't want to dazzle right now. Could we try and be cheeky and go for a close combat just to get some damage off, and then try a helping hand earth power into it, which might be enough then. But then we've got an incineral and a Groudon to, to contend with. But ah, uh, now they pick the right slot. They pick the right slot every time. Yeah, that's where we could have went helping hand earth power there. Oh well, never mind, never mind. There's a bit of a, a whimper coming out in today's one, This with this one. Um, I think it comes back to my inexperience really playing with um, with Uncle Wimmy. I've never been like super comfortable with it, and I've always had this confliction between, uh, well, playing personally myself. There's some players that play the Uncle Disable, Gengar, Wimsicott got thing so well, like masterfully, like, and I'm just like, I wish I could play like that and I just I always seem to struggle with it and uh, I can never I always seem to force it more than what I should do it's probably one of those things I need to sit down and actually just be like okay let's see how we can utilize this how it works best in games and then and then take it from there rather than kind of jumping in and just be like this is what we're gonna do um, with it and try and force it to work which never is, is a good result but very good game to my opponent there um, it's definitely uh, a strategy that I need to like definitely sharpen myself um, yeah and like I say forcing in that last match was never the way to go Coco would have been a way better option we got the taunt on there and that's for a reason you know it gives us the the fast taunt to shut Xerneas down if we can deny at least the Germancy does help us out a lot I think the team does struggle against Xerneas in general anyway because we're running pretty much special across the board so we've not really got the physical attackers that we need there to do it but I will not digress on this team because it was a bit fun to come into today's final episode with Yveltal and Groudon, so that is all we're taking away from it. There's a lot of good points to take away, which I think generalize in Pokemon anyway, so we can take those away, and that's always the good thing about it. But we are ending up, guys, now, and that is going to be it from Yveltal and Groudon for probably the rest of the season. We might bring it back, we might pull it back at some point, but um, for now, we're going to put it away, say thank you so much. Hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be moving on to a new team next week. Do remember, there is a poll up at the minute, so get voting for what you'd like to see there. And uh, I will see you all on Monday. Have an amazing weekend. Whatever you are up to, if you're going to regionals this weekend or events, have all of the luck in the world. I'll be rooting for you all, and uh, I'll look forward to hearing how you get on on Monday's episode. So until then, guys, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.